The Battle of Yen Province was a battle fought between the warlords Cao Cao and Lu Bu for control of Yen Province in the late Eastern Han Dynasty. The battle lasted for at least 100 days with an indecisive conclusion. Chapter 1 Background In 192, remnants of the Yellow Turban rebels from Qing Province invaded Yen Province and occupied Dongping and Rencheng. Lu Dai, inspector of Yen Province, wanted to attack the rebels but Bao Xin, Chancellor of Jiabai, advised him against it. Lu Dai ignored Bao Xin's warning, engaged the rebels in battle, and was eventually defeated and killed. At that time, Cao Cao's advisor Chen Gong urged him to take control of Yen province and secure it as a base for conquering other territories. Chen Gong volunteered to persuade Lu Dai's followers to join Cao Cao. Bao Xin, who was friendly towards Cao Cao, traveled to Dong Commandery to invite Cao to be the new inspector of Yen province. Cao Cao then attacked the Yellow Turban rebels at Shoshang but failed to defeat them. After that, Cao Cao reformed his army, enforced military rules more strictly, and used incentives to encourage his men. He recognized that the rebels did not have a stable flow of supplies, as they relied on plundering to sustain themselves. Hence, Cao Cao launched surprise attacks on the rebels, prevented them from pillaging, and achieving ultimate victory and forcing the rebels to retreat north. Cao Cao pursued the rebels and defeated them again at Jiabai. The rebels, numbering more than 300,000, including 100,000 civilians, surrendered to Cao Cao. Cao reorganized the surrendered troops to form the Kinshu Corps, while implementing the Tunshan system for the people to provide for themselves and the military. In 193, Cao Cao's father Cao Song was killed by Jiang Kai, a subordinate of Tao Qian, governor of Shu province. In retaliation, Cao Cao launched an attack on Tao Qian, sweeping through Tao's lands and slaughtering thousands of Shu province's population, including civilians. Tao Qian retreated to Tansheng, where Cao Cao was unable to conquer the city and retreated after his army was running low on supplies. The following year, Cao Cao attacked Tao Qian again, conquering many counties in Longya and Tonghai commanderies of Xu province. Just then, Cao Cao's subordinates Jiang Miao and Chen Gong rebelled against him, and aided Lu Bu in taking over his home base of Yen province. Cao Cao then decided to abandon his campaign on Tao Qian and turn back to retake Yen province. Chapter 2 The Battle Cao Cao and Lu Bu's forces were locked in a stalemate for at least a hundred days, with Cao on the disadvantageous end. Eventually, Lu Bu abandoned his position because of an outbreak of famine. Cao Cao then laid siege to Lu Bu at Juye, Huyang. Cao Cao's advisors Xu Nu and Cheng Yu defended the cities of Juancheng, Fan and Donga, but this left only two counties with solid defenses, so Cao Cao led his army back. Lu Bu arrived and was unable to take Juancheng by siege so he went west and garrisoned Puyang. Lu Bu re-stationed his forces to the east at Xiongyang. Lu Bu sorted out with his cavalry, and charged Cao Cao's Kinshu Corps. The Kinshu Corps fled in terror and Cao's formations fell into disarray. Seeing the confusion, Cao Cao quickly galloped ahead, but when a fire broke out he fell from his horse and burnt the palm of his left hand. Cao's army halted before they reached camp because most of the generals had not seen their lord and feared for his safety. Cao Cao then strained himself to rouse his men, ordering that siege weapons be prepared immediately so that they can besiege Lu Bu again. Zhang Miao followed Lu Bu and left his brother Zhang Zhao, administrator of Guangling, to take care of their family at Yongkayu. Cao Cao laid siege to Yongkayo for several months and eventually captured the city, killing Zhang Zhao and his family. Zhang Miao pleaded for assistance from Yuan Shu but was rejected and killed by his soldiers. At the same time, a locust plague broke out, causing many to starve while some resorted to cannibalism. Lu Bu had also used up all his provisions, horse feed, and grain supplies so both sides were forced to withdraw. When Cao Cao later surrounded Lu Bu at Puyang, 
the influential Tian clan, who were initially on Lu's side, switched allegiance to Cao and allowed his forces to enter the city. Cao Cao set fire to the eastern gate, as a sign that he had no intention of reversing course, thereupon he came under attack and was defeated. Some of Lu Bu's horsemen captured Cao Cao but were unaware of his identity. Cao Cao saw a man riding on a yellow horse and lied that the man was him, so Lu Bu's horsemen released him and chased the rider. Cao Cao then dashed through the burning eastern gate, and escaped from Puyang. Within two years, Cao Cao was able to recapture all the cities in Yen province and defeated Lu Bu at Juye. Lu Bu then fled eastwards to join Lu Bei, who had taken over Shu province from Tao Qian. Chapter 3 Aftermath. In 196, Lu Bu turned against Lu Bei, who had offered him refuge in Shu and led to the subsequent Battle of Zaipi in 198, when the allied forces of Cao Cao and Lu Bei launched an attack on Lu Bu in Shu province. Lu Bu was executed on Cao Cao's order after his defeat. Chapter 4 In Popular Culture the battle was featured as a stage in Koei's video game Dynasty Warriors 5, Extreme Legends called the Battle of Yen Province. In Dynasty Warriors 7, the battle is part of the Battle of Shu Province, which has Lu Bu attacking Cao Cao's main camp. It should not be confused with the Battle of Yen Province, which deals with remnants of the Yellow Turban rebels.